our schools, not soften them up. A gun-free zone to a killer or somebody that wants to be a killer, that's like going in for the ice cream. That's like, here I am, take me. We have to get smart on gun-free zones. When they see it says, this is a gun-free zone, that means that nobody has a gun except them. Nobody's going to be shooting bullets in the other direction. The president today at his second listening session in as many days on guns and school shootings, this one involving state and local types. He teed up this morning with a series of tweets offering solutions to stop school attacks while also defending the National Rifle Association called them Patriots. By the way, the NRA endorsed him during the 2016 campaign. At today's White House meeting, the president talked again about having teachers carry concealed weapons. I think a concealed permit for having teachers and letting people know that there are people in the building with gun. You won't have, in my opinion, you won't have these shootings because these people are cowards. They're not going to walk into a school if 20 percent of the teachers have guns. It may be 10 percent or maybe 40 percent. And what I'd recommend doing is the people that do carry, we give them a bonus. The president has also said he supports tougher background checks and the idea of keeping weapons like the AR-15 used in the Parkland, Florida shooting out of the hands of anyone under 21. But here's what he said when our NBC News colleague Hallie Jackson pressed about just how much he supports age restrictions. Thank you very much. I don't think I'll be going up against them. I really think the NRA wants to do what's right. I mean, they're very close to me. I'm very close to them. They're very, very great people. They love this country. Today, we also heard from the NRA, including a speech by the head of the organization, Wayne LaPierre, appeared at the annual Conservative Political Action Conference, where he made his first public remarks since last Wednesday's shooting. We were all horrified by another terrible tragedy at an American school. Each and every member of the National Rifle Association mourns the loss of the innocent and continues to keep their families and that community in our prayers. We share a goal of safe schools, safe neighborhoods, and a safe country. As usual, the opportunist wasted not one second to exploit tragedy for political gain. The elites don't care not one whit about America's school system and school children. They want to sweep right under the carpet the failure of school security, the failure of family, the failure of America's mental health system, and even the unbelievable failure of the FBI. Evil walks among us, and God help us if we don't harden our schools and protect our kids. Earlier in the session and coming off her appearance at last night's emotional Florida town hall, NRA spokesman Dana Lash, who said this about the press. Many in legacy media love mass shootings. You guys love it. Now, I'm not saying that you love the tragedy, but I am saying that you love the ratings. Crying white mothers are ratings gold to you and many in the legacy media in the back. It is still an open question what happens with Donald Trump, the NRA, and gun legislation. Ashley Parker of the Washington Post tonight reports the president is, quote, insisting that he be seen as spurring action and at times seeming reactive rather than deliberative, spurred on in part by what he sees as an opportunity to fix a problem that former President Barack Obama and others proved unable to solve. And on a day in which the president proposed arming school teachers, we are learning that an armed security officer, a deputy assigned to Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School, was there with his gun, but failed to enter the school when the shooting was taking place. What I saw was a deputy arrive at the west side of Building 12, take up a position, and he never went in. What should he have done? Went in, addressed the killer, 
killed the killer. Sheriff there was talking about security of his security video he was just able to review. With us tonight, the aforementioned Ashley Parker, White House reporter for The Washington Post, and Jackie Combs, White House editor for The Los Angeles Times. Uh, Ashley, Ashley, two questions, one kind of rhetorical. Remind us of how Barack Obama is guilty for not doing or saying enough after Newtown. And number two, this is not an issue this president wakes up in the morning knowing about. He doesn't have the usual institutional knowledge of the contours of an issue. He tends to land in an issue, as is the case with this. That's exactly right. Um, on your second question, this is a president who was born in Queens and spent most of his adult life in Manhattan. As his own aides pointed out to us, he, he doesn't come from a gun culture. And part of that you saw today and over this past week as he would sort of float general ideas um, but offer no specifics or say, well, maybe Congress should do something. So he sort of put himself in the center of this debate, but without exactly knowing where the exact fault lines were and the specifics of the policy. That said, he has an incredibly fine-tuned antenna for where the gun issue and where sort of Second Amendment rights are culturally and out in the country, and that's particularly true in large uh, swaths of the country that voted for him. And so he does have that intuitive sense, as he does on a number of issues, that while he may not know the policy, he knows where his base stands, and he feels he has maybe a little wiggle room, but he can't necessarily go too far. Jackie, two-part question for you as well. Mm -hmm. does, does the president have the stomach to go up against the NRA? in any way and after the public shaming of someone like Rubio do these students have the power to keep diminishing the NRA well in terms of the president um, you know he said I, I was struck in his uh, round tables of the last two days that were televised extraordinary t you know to watch the president sort of off the cuff trying to make policy and he said I it was a very striking parallel to me to what he did just recently, some weeks back, in the subject of immigration and uh, relief for the um, young immigrants who came here uh, as children and uh, the DACA children, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. In that same way, he had one of these extraordinary hour-long televised events where he spoke in a bipartisan conciliatory way he said he would stand up to the to both sides he would provide cover for republicans to take a hard vote and that might make the republican base angry and then he himself heard from that base and and hardened his position on immigration and then made demands of the Democrats and some Republicans that they balked at, and then we saw nothing happened on immigration and DACA, and he blamed it on the Democrats. I sort of see the same thing playing out here, where he said he would stand up. He said today that the, he's told the NRA that they're going to have to bend, that some of these laws have mm -hmm. to toughen. Mm -hmm. I, I really, you know, there was no sign at the CPAC uh, event, and you played uh, Dana Lesh's and... Um, uh, Wayne LaPierre's comments, there was no sign of conciliation or compromise there at all. And I and they they stand by their position that they are against raising the minimum wage. The president said they wouldn't block it, but um, I don't think many people think the president will will go up against them. As for the the students, this is a new fact.